part two chapter two section two of the possessed by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine chapter two night continued section two the house which nikolai vsyevolodovitch had reached stood alone in a deserted lane between fences beyond which market gardens stretched at the very end of the town it was a very solitary little wooden house which was only just built and not yet weather-boarded in one of the little windows the shutters were not yet closed and there was a candle standing on the window ledge evidently as a signal to the late guest who was expected that night thirty paces away stavrogin made out on the doorstep the figure of a tall man evidently the master of the house who had come out to stare impatiently up the road he heard his voice too impatient and as it were timid is that you you yes responded nikolai vsyevolodovitch but not till he had mounted the steps and was folding up his umbrella at last sir captain lebyadkin for it was he ran fussily to and fro let me take your umbrella please it's very wet i'll open it on the floor here in the corner please walk in please walk in the door was opened from the passage into a room that was lighted by two candles if it had not been for your promise that you would certainly come i should have given up expecting you a quarter to one said nikolai vsyevolodovitch looking at his watch as he went into the room and in this rain in such an interesting distance i've no clock and there are nothing but market gardens round me so that you fall behind the times not that i murmur exactly for i dare not i dare not but only because i've been devoured with impatience all the week to have things settled at last how so to hear my fate nikolai vsyevolodovitch please sit down he bowed pointing to a seat by the table before the sofa nikolai vsyevolodovitch looked round the room was tiny and low-pitched the furniture consisted only of the most essential articles plain wooden chairs and a sofa also newly made without covering or cushions there were two tables of lime wood one by the sofa and the other in the corner was covered with a tablecloth laid with things over which a clean table napkin had been thrown and indeed the whole room was obviously kept extremely clean captain lebyadkin had not been drunk for eight days his face looked bloated and yellow his eyes looked uneasy inquisitive and obviously bewildered it was only too evident that he did not know what tone he should adopt and what line it would be most advantageous for him to take here he indicated his surroundings i live like zosima sobriety solitude and poverty the vow of the knights of old do you imagine that the knights of old took such vows perhaps i'm mistaken alas i have no culture i've ruined all believe me nikolai vsyevolodovitch here first i have recovered from shameful propensities not a glass nor a drop i have a home and for six days past i have experienced a conscience at ease even the walls smell of rosin and remind me of nature and what have i been what was i at night without a bed i wander and my tongue put out by day to use the words of a poet of genius but you're wet through wouldn't you like some tea don't trouble the samovar has been boiling since eight o'clock but it went out at last like everything in this world the sun too they say will go out in its turn but if you like i'll get up the samovar agafya is not asleep tell me marya timofyevna she's here here lebyadkin replied at once in a whisper would you like to have a look at her he pointed to the closed door to the next room she's not asleep oh no no how could she be on the contrary she's been expecting you all the evening and as soon as she heard you were coming she began making her toilet he was just twisting his mouth into a jocose smile but he instantly checked himself how is she on the whole asked nikolai vsyevolodovitch frowning on the whole you know that yourself sir he shrugged his shoulders commiseratingly but just now just now she's telling her fortune with cards very good later on first of all i must finish with you nikolai vsyevolodovitch settled himself in a chair the captain did not venture to sit down on the sofa but at once moved up another chair for himself and bent forward to listen in a tremor of expectation what have you got there under the tablecloth asked nikolai vsyevolodovitch suddenly noticing it that said lebyadkin turning towards it also 
that's from your generosity by way of housewarming so to say considering also the length of the walk and your natural fatigue he sniggered ingratiatingly then he got up on tiptoe and respectfully and carefully lifted the tablecloth from the table in the corner under it was seen a slight meal ham veal sardines cheese a little green decanter and a long bottle of bordeaux everything had been laid neatly expertly and almost daintily was that your effort yes sir ever since yesterday i've done my best and all to do you honour marya timofyevna doesn't trouble herself as you know on that score and what's more it's all from your liberality your own providing as you're the master of the house and not i and i'm only so to say your agent all the same all the same nikolai vsyevolodovitch all the same in spirit i'm independent don't take away from me this last possession he finished up pathetically hm. you might sit down again grateful grateful and independent he sat down ah nikolai vsyevolodovitch so much has been fermenting in this heart that i have not known how to wait for your coming now you will decide my fate and that unhappy creatures and then shall i pour out all i feel to you as i used to in old days four years ago you deigned to listen to me then you read my verses they might call me your falstaff from shakespeare in those days but you meant so much in my life i have great terrors now and it's only to you i look for counsel and light pyotr stepanovitch is treating me abominably nikolai vsyevolodovitch listened with interest and looked at him attentively it was evident that though captain lebyadkin had left off drinking he was far from being in a harmonious state of mind drunkards of many years standing like lebyadkin often show traces of incoherence of mental cloudiness of something as it were damaged and crazy though they may deceive cheat and swindle almost as well as anybody if occasion arises i see that you haven't changed a bit in these four years and more captain said nikolai vsyevolodovitch somewhat more amiably it seems in fact as though the second half of a man's life is usually made up of nothing but the habits he has accumulated during the first half grand words you solve the riddle of life said the captain half cunningly half in genuine and unfeigned admiration for he was a great lover of words of all your sayings nikolai vsyevolodovitch i remember one thing above all you were in petersburg when you said it one must really be a great man to be able to make a stand even against common sense that was it yes and a fool as well a fool as well maybe but you've been scattering clever sayings all your life while they imagine liputin imagine pyotr stepanovitch saying anything like that oh how cruelly pyotr stepanovitch has treated me but how about yourself captain what can you say of your behaviour drunkenness and the multitude of my enemies but now that's all over all over and i have a new skin like a snake do you know nikolai vsyevolodovitch i'm making my will in fact i've made it already oh that's interesting what are you leaving and to whom to my fatherland to humanity and to the students nikolai vsyevolodovitch i read in the paper the biography of an american he left all his vast fortune to factories and to the exact sciences and his skeleton to the students of the academy there and his skin to be made into a drum so that the american national hymn might be beaten upon it day and night alas we are pygmies in mind compared with the soaring thought of the states of north america russia is the play of nature but not of mind if i were to try leaving my skin for a drum for instance to the akmolinsky infantry regiment in which i had the honour of beginning my service on condition of beating the russian national hymn upon it every day in face of the regiment they'd take it for liberalism and prohibit my skin and so i confine myself to the students i want to leave my skeleton to the academy but on the condition though on the condition that a label should be stuck on the forehead for ever and ever with the words a repentant free thinker there now the captain spoke excitedly and genuinely believed of course that there was something fine in the american will but he was cunning too and very anxious to entertain nikolai vsyevolodovitch with whom he had played the part of a buffoon for a long time in the past but the latter did not even smile on the contrary he asked as it were suspiciously so you intend to publish your will in your lifetime and get rewarded for it and what if i do nikolai vsyevolodovitch what if i do said lebyadkin watching him carefully 
what sort of luck have i had i've given up writing poetry and at one time even you were amused by my verses nikolai vsyevolodovitch do you remember our reading them over a bottle but it's all over with my pen i've written only one poem like gogol's the last story do you remember he proclaimed to russia that it broke spontaneously from his bosom it's the same with me i've sung my last and it's over what sort of poem in case she were to break her leg what that was all the captain was waiting for he had an unbounded admiration for his own poems but through a certain cunning duplicity he was pleased too that nikolai vsyevolodovitch always made merry over his poems and sometimes laughed at them immoderately in this way he killed two birds with one stone satisfying at once his poetical aspirations and his desire to be of service but now he had a third special and very ticklish object in view bringing his verses on the scene the captain thought to exculpate himself on one point about which for some reason he always felt himself most apprehensive and most guilty in case of her breaking her leg that is of her riding on horseback it's a fantasy nikolai vsyevolodovitch a wild fancy but the fancy of a poet one day i was struck by meeting a lady on horseback and asked myself the vital question what would happen then that is in case of accident all her followers turn away all her suitors are gone a pretty kettle of fish only the poet remains faithful with his heart shattered in his breast nikolai vsyevolodovitch even a louse may be in love and is not forbidden by law and yet the lady was offended by the letter and the verses i'm told that even you were angry were you i wouldn't believe in anything so grievous whom could i harm simply by imagination besides i swear on my honour liputin kept saying send it send it every man however humble has a right to send a letter and so i sent it you offered yourself as a suitor i understand enemies 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 repeat the verses said nikolai vsyevolodovitch sternly ravings ravings more than anything however he drew himself up stretched out his hand and began with broken limbs my beauteous queen is twice as charming as before and deep in love as i have been to-day i love her even more come that's enough said nikolai vsyevolodovitch a wave of his hand i dream of petersburg cried lebyadkin passing quickly to another subject as though there had been no mention of verses i dream of regeneration benefactor may i reckon that you won't refuse the means for the journey i've been waiting for you all the week as my sunshine i'll do nothing of the sort i've scarcely any money left and why should i give you money nikolai vsyevolodovitch seemed suddenly angry dryly and briefly he recapitulated all the captain's misdeeds his drunkenness his lying his squandering of the money meant for marya timofyevna his having taken her from the nunnery his insolent letters threatening to publish the secret the way he had behaved about darya pavlovna and so on and so on the captain heaved gesticulated began to reply but every time nikolai vsyevolodovitch stopped him peremptorily and listen he observed at last you keep writing about family disgrace what disgrace is it to you that your sister is the lawful wife of a stavrogin but marriage in secret nikolai vsyevolodovitch a fatal secret i receive money from you and i'm suddenly asked the question what's that money for my hands are tied i cannot answer to the detriment of my sister to the detriment of the family honour the captain raised his voice he liked that subject and reckoned boldly upon it alas he did not realize what a blow was in store for him calmly and exactly as though he were speaking of the most everyday arrangement nikolai vsyevolodovitch informed him that in a few days perhaps even to-morrow or the day after he intended to make his marriage known everywhere to the police as well as to local society and so the question of family honour would be settled once for all and with it the question of subsidy the captain's eyes were ready to drop out of his head he positively could not take it in it had to be explained to him but she is crazy i shall make suitable arrangements but how about your mother well she must do as she likes but will you take your wife to your house perhaps so but that is absolutely nothing to do with you and no concern of yours no concern of mine cried the captain what about me then well certainly you won't come into my house 
but you know i'm a relation one does one's best to escape from such relations why should i go on giving you money then judge for yourself nikolai vsyevolodovitch nikolai vsyevolodovitch this is impossible you will think better of it perhaps you don't want to lay hands upon what will people think what will the world say how much i care for your world i married your sister when the fancy took me after a drunken dinner for a bet and now i make it public since that amuses me now he said this with a peculiar irritability so that lebyadkin began with horror to believe him but me me what about me i'm what matters most perhaps you're joking nikolai vsyevolodovitch no i'm not joking as you will nikolai vsyevolodovitch but i don't believe you then i'll take proceedings you're fearfully stupid captain maybe but this is all that's left me said the captain losing his head completely in old days we used to get free quarters anyway for the work she did in the corners but what will happen now if you throw me over altogether but you want to go to petersburg to try a new career by the way is it true what i hear that you mean to go and give information in the hope of obtaining a pardon by betraying all the others the captain stood gaping with wide open eyes and made no answer listen captain stavrogin began suddenly with great earnestness bending down to the table until then he had been talking as it were ambiguously so that lebyadkin who had wide experience in playing the part of buffoon was up to the last moment a trifle uncertain whether his patron were really angry or simply putting it on whether he really had the wild intention of making his marriage public or whether he were only playing now nikolai vsyevolodovitch's stern expression was so convincing that a shiver ran down the captain's back listen and tell the truth lebyadkin have you betrayed anything yet or not have you succeeded in doing anything really have you sent a letter to somebody in your foolishness no i haven't and i haven't thought of doing it said the captain looking fixedly at him that's a lie that you haven't thought of doing it that's what you're asking to go to petersburg for if you haven't written have you blabbed to anybody here speak the truth i've heard something when i was drunk to liputin liputin's a traitor i opened my heart to him whispered the poor captain well that's all very well but there's no need to be an ass if you had an idea you should have kept it to yourself sensible people hold their tongues nowadays they don't go chattering nikolai vsyevolodovitch said the captain quaking you've had nothing to do with it yourself it's not you i've yes you wouldn't have ventured to kill the goose that laid your golden eggs judge for yourself nikolai vsyevolodovitch judge for yourself and in despair with tears the captain began hurriedly relating the story of his life for the last four years it was the most stupid story of a fool drawn into matters that did not concern him and in his drunkenness and debauchery unable till the last minute to grasp their importance he said that before he left petersburg he had been drawn in at first simply through friendship like a regular student although he wasn't a student and knowing nothing about it without being guilty of anything he had scattered various papers on staircases left them by dozens at doors on bell handles had thrust them in as though they were newspapers taken them to the theatre put them in people's hats and slipped them into pockets afterwards he had taken money from them for what means had i he had distributed all sorts of rubbish through the districts of two provinces oh nikolai vsyevolodovitch he exclaimed what revolted me most was that this was utterly opposed to civic and still more to patriotic laws they suddenly printed that men were to go out with pitchforks and to remember that those who went out poor in the morning might go home rich at night only think of it it made me shudder and yet i distributed it or suddenly five or six lines addressed to the whole of russia apropos of nothing make haste and lock up the churches abolish god do away with marriage destroy the right of inheritance take up your knives that's all and god knows what it means i tell you i almost got caught with this five-line leaflet the officers in the regiment gave me a thrashing but bless them for it let me go and last year i was almost caught when i passed off french counterfeit notes for fifty roubles on korovayev but thank god korovayev fell into the pond when he was drunk and was drowned in the nick of time and they didn't succeed in tracking me here at virginsky's i proclaimed the freedom of the communistic life in june i was distributing manifestoes again in x district they say they will make me do it again 
pyotr stepanovitch suddenly gave me to understand that i must obey he's been threatening me a long time how he treated me that sunday nikolai vsyevolodovitch i am a slave i am a worm but not a god which is where i differ from derzhavin but i've no income no income nikolai vsyevolodovitch heard it all with curiosity a great deal of that i had heard nothing of he said of course anything may have happened to you listen he said after a minute's thought if you like you can tell them you know whom that liputin was lying and that you were only pretending to give information to frighten me supposing that i too was compromised and that you might get more money out of me that way do you understand dear nikolai vsyevolodovitch is it possible that there's such a danger hanging over me i've been longing for you to come to ask you nikolai vsyevolodovitch laughed they certainly wouldn't let you go to petersburg even if i were to give you money for the journey but it's time for me to see maria timofyevna and he got up from his chair nikolai vsyevolodovitch but how about maria timofyevna why as i told you can it be true you still don't believe it will you really cast me off like an old worn-out shoe i'll see laughed nikolai vsyevolodovitch come let me go wouldn't you like me to stand on the steps for fear i might by chance overhear something for the rooms are small that says well stand on the steps take my umbrella your umbrella am i worth it said the captain over sweetly any one is worthy of an umbrella at one stroke you define the minimum of human rights but he was by now muttering mechanically he was too much crushed by what he had learned and was completely thrown out of his reckoning and yet almost as soon as he had gone out onto the steps and had put up the umbrella there his shallow and cunning brain caught again the ever-present comforting idea that he was being cheated and deceived and if so they were afraid of him and there was no need for him to be afraid if they're lying and deceiving me what's at the bottom of it was the thought that gnawed at his mind the public announcement of the marriage seemed to him absurd it's true that with such a wonder-worker anything may come to pass he lives to do harm but what if he's afraid himself since the insult of sunday and afraid as he's never been before and so he's in a hurry to declare that he'll announce it himself from fear that i should announce it eh don't blunder lebyadkin and why does he come on the sly at night if he means to make it public himself and if he's afraid it means that he's afraid now at this moment for these few days eh don't make a mistake lebyadkin he scares me with pyotr stepanovitch oh i am frightened i'm frightened yes this is what's so frightening and what induced me to blab to liputin goodness knows what these devils are up to i never can make head or tail of it now they are all astir again as they were five years ago to whom could i give information indeed haven't i written to any one in my foolishness hm. so then i might write as though through foolishness isn't he giving me a hint you're going to petersburg on purpose ah the sly rogue i've scarcely dreamed of it and he guesses my dreams as though he were putting me up to going himself it's one or the other of two games he's up to either he's afraid because he's been up to some pranks himself or he's not afraid for himself but is simply egging me on to give them all away ah it's terrible lebyadkin ah you must not make a blunder he was so absorbed in thought that he forgot to listen it was not easy to hear either the door was a solid one and they were talking in a very low voice nothing reached the captain but indistinct sounds he positively spat in disgust and went out again lost in thought to whistle on the steps end of part two chapter two section two recording by expatriate in bangor maine